So the DNC kicked off last night, and let's just say it was no short of a disaster. There's too many things to put in one video, but to start off, no one really came. There was more pro-Palestine protesters outside than there were audience members. But the DNC was basically what you did expect. Donald Trump fell asleep at his own trial, and when he woke up, he made his own kind of history, the first person to run for president with 34 felony convictions. Yeah, then the single women and low testosterone men, aka the voters in the audience, all scream lock him up as if it's a clever line, even though most don't understand what the scam of the 34 counts entailed, they just want a label. But that sums up their party in a nutshell. They don't vote on policy, they vote to be a label, i.e. reproductive freedom, save democracy, save the world, it's all cringy stuff. But then it gets even more weird, since the RNC was so successful with Hulk Hogan, this old man tried to mimic Hulk Hogan and it didn't work out very well. It's getting hot in here. Enough was enough. And I said, let Trump a media run wild, brother. If you felt no energy in the first part, then I'm with you. But if you found motivation and energy to go work out and PR in the gym when Hulk Hogan appeared, then I'm absolutely with you. Then a state senator speaks and says, if Donald Trump is elected, he will weaponize the DOJ to lock up opponents. Can somebody tell her? Donald Trump would be able to weaponize the Department of Justice to go after his political opponents. He could even turn the FBI into his own personal police force. That is not how it works in America. That's how it works in dictatorships. Thank you, that's what we've been saying for four years. Weaponizing the DOJ is what works in dictatorships. Did anyone else catch an uncomfortable vibe of the voters clapping? They were clapping like, um, we're weaponizing it right now against Trump, so shh, stop talking. But then this is the most cringe-worthy and honestly disrespectful moment of the night. They essentially mocked a man with ALS on stage by letting him speak. <laughs> In 2008, we met while working on the Obama-Biden campaign. This isn't an SNL comedy sketch. What is wrong with these demented people? Like, ooh, they are giving me the heebie-jeebies. I guess it's pretty fitting. I mean, look at Kamala's family and the way Doug is grabbing up on his daughter like she's a stripper. And they want to call J.D. Vance weird? But let's turn the gears towards Nancy Pelosi, someone who now just admitted that she basically kicked Biden out of the ticket. How do you talk I to him? I have to do what I have to do. Right. He made the decision for the country. My concern was not about the president. It was about his campaign. And look how uncomfortable she is holding the sign of I love Joe. Like, she just looks like she's guilty <laughs> of all charges. Yeah, that was totally convincing. But now let's turn towards really arguably the most important clip of the night. The fact that the Democrat platform still references policies for a Biden second term. They have not changed it to Kamala's policies because, again, as I mentioned every single video since she started running, she has not released any policies and there's none on her website. These Democrats are voting blindly, not knowing what they're getting, and it's incredibly dangerous, actually. David Chalian, uh, President Biden dropped out of the race uh, uh, a month and a day ago. You wouldn't know that if you read the Democratic platform because it repeatedly refers to President Biden's second term. There are roughly 19 or 20 mentions of President Biden's second term. They've had a month and a day to update it. Why haven't they? Yeah, there won't be one of those, uh, Biden's second term. We know that. And, uh, you know, listen, the, the platform was uh, largely the, the draft of it put in place and voted on earlier uh, this summer. And I think uh, in talking to some folks, the idea of re reopening the platform to try to fit in not yet fully developed Kamala Harris policies while they were quickly changing, they thought they would be opening a can of worms, right? And that there would be all of a sudden some fights about what goes in the platform and they wanted to avoid that at all costs. So they're willing to take the hit on the fact that the platform is uh, sort of a relic of the Biden era because it's a non-binding thing. They'll vote officially today as part of the party business to put it into effect. But as you know, it has no binding uh, capacity. to. Right. And we should note uh, that this also allows 
Vice President Harris to stay vague, stay, <laughs> you know, unspecific. Uh, that's from the Biden platform. That's not ours. Uh, this allows Kamala to stay vague. This is taking me back to the 2020 race when Biden campaigned in the basement. Surely at some point he'll speak to voters and come out of there, but I was proven wrong and this is sounding like it would be the same thing. Kamala may actually not ever do a formal interview or answer any questions. At least she'll do it in a severely limited capacity and voters may never know what her policies are unless they do intense research and that's not fair to the American people.